everybody, Kurt here with Ask Request One. So I just got back from Lake George and I got a, I had the opportunity to test out uh, two different lenses for taking pictures of the Milky Way. First off, let me show you my setup. I wanted to do it now. I didn't want to do it in the field because nobody sees anything out in the dark anyways. But I've got my Monfranto tripod, very solid. And I've got my Ioptron Skyguider Pro. I've got, I have the Ioptron uh, ball head, which comes in very handy. It's a very solid ball head. And I've got my Canon T3i. And also when I go in the field and take images like this, I, I have this little uh, inv envelope, env envirometer, uh, however you say it, and it's a remote control, it just plugs right in. So these, these a must have if you wanna do some astrophotography in the field. Okay, before getting started in with the lenses, I should say something about this uh, Ioptron Skyguider Pro. Apparently, Skywatcher uh, brand, uh, they have a new Sky Adventure 2, which apparently has Wi-Fi. So, you know, it's uh, Ioptron better get their act together here. But uh, I'm happy with this. I'm not going to run out and buy a, spend another $400 buying a, another one of these things just because it has Wi-Fi. Okay. So, anyways, up in... Lake George, we were on vacation, as I said, and they have Bortle 4 skies there. Here it's Bortle 5, so I it's slightly better skies, so I was able to get a little slightly better images of the Milky Way. So what two, um, what two lenses am I going to test out? Well, I'm going to test out the standard 18 to 55 millimeter Canon lens. It's a f3.5 to 5.6 that comes standard with these uh, cameras when you buy them new. And I'm also going to test out uh, this thing. This is the Opteca 6.5 millimeter fisheye lens. And this is, um, I've had this for a number of years now and I'm very happy with uh, this uh, lens as well. Okay, let's take a look at my uh, Canon lens here, the one that came with the camera. I actually put little marks on here. I don't know if you really see them here, but I put a little piece of tape and I put a line through it. And I also put some lines where you do the focusing with uh, whiteout. So I have an idea of where focus is because the hardest thing to do when you're out in the field with a lens like this is focus it. You see, even though it's automatic focus on here, it's a mechanical, it's, it's a fully automatic lens. You wanna put on the manual mode in order to focus because you really it's not going to do the automatic focus on a star it, it doesn't work so you have to focus it by hand and that's what's really tough with these things for this camera i found the iso 1600 or 800 works well for astrophotography the optimal range uh, for trying to capture a lot of data would be uh, 1600 so that's what i normally use i don't go any higher than 1600 because too much noise gets in it so so what else can I say? Oh, it goes down to f3.5, although I went with f4. I went one step up because the stars come out a little bit better with the uh, higher f ratio. Even though you're sacrificing a little light gathering ability, it's uh, sometimes the quality of the stars wins out. That's what astrophotography is, a give and take. You do one thing and you have to adjust another in order to get the right balance. So I'll show you my image that I got with this. As I said, I call this a cheapo lens, but it's actually economical. Economical is a better word. And if you have the icon, icon if you have a Nikon, same thing. They, they give you this lens. I think they're only like 50 bucks if you wanted to buy it outright. So anyways, let's go. Okay, let's go take a look at this Opteca lens here. Before I put it on here, let me show you what these things are if you're not familiar with these fisheye lenses. I'll take the cap off and you can see how it's, let me get a better view of it. See how it's rounded up there? They're kind of neat looking, these, these lenses. It's pretty heavy, so, well, it's heavier than that one, the other ones. Okay, let's snap it in. I'll, I'll put the cap back on here. Okay, so as I said, I've had this for a few years now. It's about $130 or so, somewhere around there, give or take. But this, this lens is mechanical, so there's no automatic focus on here anyways. 
So you might think, oh, you still got to put a line. Are you putting lines on here trying to focus this? Well, the good thing about a totally mechanical lens like this is that it has an infinity marker on here. So you don't have to focus it if you're focusing on stars because since it's already got the infinity mark on here, you just put it on infinity and it's all set. It's already focused. The other lens, uh, mechanical or automatic lenses, they go past infinity. So that's why you, when you turn it on mechanical mode, you have to play around in order to get it uh, focused. Whereas this one, mechanical lenses, uh, totally mechanical lens, you don't have to worry about that. So what's the deal with this lens? 6.5 millimeter, that means you're gonna get a really, really, really wide field. And it's a fisheye. So what does fisheye mean? It means the edges are gonna be distorted. You, you probably have seen images of fisheye images, and you'll see this when, you, when I show you my uh, image at the end. So they give a sort of distorted view, which has some good things and bad things. Uh, the good things is, these lenses tend to be more inexpensive. As I said, $130 for this thing. Samyung has it for $220. So if you want a nice wide field camera, a, a nice wide field lens, this could be it for a relatively inexpensive price. So if you're on a budget, normal lenses that give such a wide field of view would be $500 or, or more. But so these are good for people that are on a budget. So this is goes from f 3.5 to f uh, 22. So nice, nice good range there. And for imaging with this thing, I did it the same. My, my the camera settings were still the same. Like I said, ISO 1600. I chose to shoot this one at f. 5.6. I went up one step and that's the next step up is 5.6. And I, oh, I, I did do one thing different. I, I shot, I took one minute exposures with this thing rather than the 30 second exposures. And because they're distorted, the, the stars around the edges might be a little more uh, elongated than normal. So that's the one downfall with this thing. And you know, you'll see chromatic aberration on the stars. But um, other than that, yeah, these lenses are, 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 are a pretty good deal. Anyways, okay, well, I think that's all I wanted to say. So, you know, as I said, I've got the camera lens that came with the camera, or I went with the fisheye lens for taking wide field Milky Way shots. So you'll see some images that I took with this thing on my trip, and I hope you got some use out of this, and we'll see you next time.